Hello there, bro. Steph, Prophecy Insights. And something is going on today that I just think you should be aware of. Um, and it really has to do with the alignment of nations with regard to the Ezekiel 38 prophecy that discusses Turkey and Iran, Persia, coming together and really asking, according to Bible prophecy, a very important question. And I'm going to read to you right now Psalm 2, because this is the question that Iran and Turkey are talking about today. I mean, God just pinpoints it exactly, just knew exactly what they were going to be discussing. Psalm 2 in the New King James Version. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. So today, Iran and Turkey are discussing, according to their own news reports, what, sh what are we going to do about Israel? Israel is gaining influence, power, authority, momentum, economic authority, and they're the, the countries of the world now are becoming very concerned that Israel is, well, doesn't need anyone to continue its existence. It can do just fine without the rest of the world if it has to. Well, they're really bothered that Israel has found all this oil, natural gas, off their coast, that they're now selling oil and natural gas to the European community nations. So they're just really, the nations are in an uproar about it, but specifically Iran and Turkey are really bothered because the uh, Prime Minister of Turkey is a uh, a he is a, a fanatic Islamic Islamicist. Let me put it that way. He's very fanatical in his belief systems, as is Iran. I mean, they believe in the 12th Imam, where the, the Imam will return. They say that's going to be Jesus. He's going to come back, destroy all of Islam's enemies, and they'll forever uh, rule over the whole world, live at peace forever. That's what the Islamicists believe. Um, and so Iran and Turkey have come together today, would actually be yesterday, to sit around a table with their consultants and counselors to plot, as it were, how to deal with Israel. Because Israel is becoming this proverbial pain in their hindsight. 
because so much good is happening in Israel. I mean, this recent uh, Natan's uh, sabotage, it's now coming out, leaking out as I knew it would, that it was the Israeli Mossad that pulled it off. Uh, if you want to get the real inside story to what happened here, I posted on my profile page on Facebook, Bro Steph. I posted the video by uh, Amir Serfate, who is a Jewish Israeli. Uh, was a, a is Jewish, is Israeli, is born again, and knows his Messiah, um, and was a major in the Israeli Defense Forces. It's got a lot of people in high places that can, how do we say, just kind of give them some breadcrumbs. Uh, and they know he'll figure the rest out on his own. But uh, everything he shares on that video today is not classified. He uh, One thing about Amir, he only shares what is not classified information. But it's real amazing to hear him walk you through, walk the viewer through what actually happened there. The long and short of it is that Iran had this computer bank, whole bank, console. Uh, there was some issues, technical issues with it. They had shipped it overseas to get those things corrected. The Mossad, who is thoroughly embedded in Iran, by the way, I mean, you if you look put an Iranian and the Israeli Mossad agent side by side, you can't tell who the Israeli and who the Ir Iranian is. They all they look so much. They look alike, not not in like twins or anything, but their skin color, their mannerisms. Everything's in agreement. The Israeli Mossad really, really know how to embed uh, their people so that they will not get detected. Anyway, they send the computer console off to get fixed. The Israeli Mossad followed that console. And as it was getting ready to be shipped back, packed it with something like, oh, what was it, 100 tons of TNT, of explosive. Uh, and so it came back to Iran, and they did it in a way where, where the Iranians wouldn't be able to detect the explosive, sent it back in, they installed it, and as you heard a couple days ago, there was a very loud kaboom underground at the Natanz nuclear facility in Iran, poof, there goes the thing they just spent millions and millions of dollars to get fixed, and it ends up destroying the entire computerization and electrical systems of that plant underground. It, virtually, they... It, I mean, to fix it, they're probably going to have to tear out concrete walls. And it's, it's a mess. And I'm glad it's a mess because you don't want Iran being these, the, they are so fanatical. The last thing we want is them to have a nuclear weapon. So thank God that Israel knows how to fight these kinds of these kinds of battles, you know. And uh, we should, before we go to sleep tonight, we should, uh, as we put our heads on our pillows, say a prayer of thanksgiving 
that God gave the Israeli Mossad the know-how to be able to stop Iran's forward momentum uh, with developing a nuclear bomb. And we ought to say thank you, Lord, for protecting the world from a nuclear catastrophe. And I say that now from the bottom of my heart, Father in heaven, thank you for blessing Israel and giving them the know-how to stop the mullahs of Iran from developing a nuclear weapon. Thank you that you'll be watching over Israel and the Jewish people and all born-again believers. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for the salvation of the Jew in Jesus' name. So, I want to continue with Psalm 2 and wrap things up with that. Um, verse 4, he who sits in the heavens, this is God's response to these kings and these nations getting together to decide how to do away with Israel. Here's God's response. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on the holy hill of Zion. And that is the son of David or the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah, the king that will sit on the holy hill that is Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. So, when Jesus returns, the son of David returns at his second coming. He's not going to return as the mild, meek and mild, ride into Jerusalem on a donkey which that's what kings did when they were coming in peace, by the way. No, Jesus is going to ride in on a white stallion, which means he's coming to make war with the nations and all of his enemies and his father's enemies. He's going to dash them into pieces. He's going to rule with a rod of iron. That is going to be the posture of the king of kings and lord of lords when he returns again. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. That's not S-U-N. That's S. Capital S O N, the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Capital H, him. Look, God is still pleading with the kings of the world. Stop the nonsense. Stop being foolish. Ask Jesus into your hearts and lives. Turn from your evil, wicked ways and be born again. And then you'll kiss the sun on his cheek. You'll kiss his hand. 
and he'll bless you. And his wrath will not be kindled against you. I mean, even though God's anger in Ezekiel 38 rises up in his face, at the same time, if someone falls to their knees and humbles themselves and asks Jesus into their life, the wrath of God will pass over them. Even when he's angry, you can appeal to him for mercy by the confession of sin and the acknowledgement of who Jesus is and asking for that forgiveness and acknowledging that because of his shed blood on that cross, you can have the gift of eternal life. We all can by just accepting the gift that God sent us, the Lord Jesus. Yeshua, accept him into your life today if you haven't. Ask Jesus to come into your life and to save you. Go to brostuff.com, scroll down toward the end of that page, and it says how to start your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. Follow that information there and ask him into your heart and life today. This is Burrow Steph. I, I hope that this prophecy update has been a blessing to you. Remember to pray for me and for Carla and my wife, and we'll pray for you. We are praying for you. Make it a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.